Hey y'all, it's Farmer Meemaw and today is finally that day. The day that I set up my coffee bar with the things that I got at the Dollar Tree, Dollar General, and Hobby Lobby. Um, it is also the day that I'm going to focus on the appropriate recipes for this. First, I'm going to be showing you how I make cold brew coffee concentrate for those days when you don't want to make coffee or those days when you want iced coffee and you don't want to go through the process of making coffee and then cooling it down. But also I'm going to show you three fall inspired coffee creamer recipes and these recipes are going to be healthier. They're going to be healthier than anything you're going to be able to buy from the store. The flavors are going to be phenomenal um, and some of them will be keto-ish You'll just have to wait and see. They're gonna be good, wholesome coffee creamers and I'll, I'll show you how I'm gonna make them. Okay, so let's start with the coffee concentrate because it's gonna to need to set for 12 hours or preferably overnight. Um, my French press is about 1.1 liters and that's pretty standard. Um, so I am putting in about a cup and a third of coffee grounds. Now, if you don't have a French press, you can totally do this entire process in a mason jar. No big deal. You can make as much or as little as you want. But the ratio should be about, for every one and a half liters of, of a container you have, about two cups of coffee. So like I said, I'm putting in about a cup and a third of coffee. After you add your coffee to your water, you're gonna realize, well, or your water to your coffee, um, coffee floats. So you really need to give it a really good stir to get that water um, distributed throughout the coffee grounds. And there's gonna be more room to add water after you get those stirred up good. And so just keep doing that until your container is full. Um, as you see, that's what I'm doing here. And, and then I'm just gonna keep stirring it because I wanna make sure that all of those coffee grounds are saturated. And at this point, I am just going to leave it out on my counter for at least 12 hours. So at the end of 12 hours or the next day, you can do one of two things. You can either strain it all off and then put it in a jar and put it in your refrigerator or you can leave the coffee grounds in the jar and put the whole thing in the refrigerator. It just depends on what your preference is. Some people like to keep the coffee in the jar, the coffee grounds in the jar because then the coffee just continues to get stronger over time. But if you are like me and you don't wanna deal with the hassle of straining out coffee grounds every time you want a cup of, cup of coffee, then do it like I do it and go ahead and strain it out up front once your 12 hours or overnight is over with so that you can just go pour that coffee, pour you some creamer and be done with it. Okay, so the base of each of these coffee creamers is going to be half and half. The reason, and, and specifically I'm using Kroger's half and half because Kroger's half and half actually only contains milk and cream. They don't have any of those other chemicals that you see in all the other half and halves and all the other uh, hot, uh, heavy creams um, unless they're the all natural, organic, really expensive ones. Um, and I've noticed since I started drinking, um, I, I've start, I got an, a quart of heavy cream that was like $8. Um, and my weight has actually started going down because I'm not drinking uh, the heavy cream that had carrageenan in it anymore. And so I'm completely um, avoiding carrageenan and I would rather get the few extra carbs from half and half than be drinking carrageenan that is in the heavy cream. So, two cups of half and half. And to that, I should have probably gotten some measuring spoons. Huh. So this is going to be our pumpkin pie spice or pumpkin spice so in true Mima fashion i either deleted the recording of this recipe or i simply somehow did not record the rest of this recipe the process is similar to the other ones and i'll leave the instructions down below okay for the next recipe we're going to start back at 
two cups of half and half. So there's our two cups. This recipe is going to be peppermint mocha. And so we're going to add We're going to add a third a cup, let me make sure, one third cup of cocoa powder. This is cacao powder that I got um, either at Sam's or Costco. Okay. And you're going to need a lot of sweetener to deal with that cocoa powder. Okay. But first, we're going to add, we're going to add a te one teaspoon to start out. This is pure extract. Whew, pure peppermint extract. So let's start with a teaspoon. one cup of sweetener. This is a one-to-one -one replacement with, this is a one-to-one -one replacement with sugar. And so you could put in one cup of regular sugar if you wanted to. Now I'm just letting it simmer a bit and I'm stirring it the whole time so that it doesn't scorch or anything like that. Just a few minutes and then it's done. Now this one is ready. I'm gonna turn the fire off and let it cool. Okay, so the last one we're gonna make is a gingerbread cookie. And we are going to start with two cups. And we are going to add molasses as part of our sweetener. So I'm going to say about maybe about a tablespoon or so. Okay. Let's start heating this up. Now, if you had fresh ginger, you could chop into chunks and use to infuse. That would be awesome. That would probably be even better. I'm going to add about a half a cup. There's a quarter. And here's a half, and that is my monk fruit. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and measure my ginger this time because I want to make sure I get enough. So we're gonna we're gonna start out with we're gonna do one teaspoon. We're gonna do one teaspoon of ginger. Wait, double check. Okay, yeah, that's ginger. Whoa! Y'all think that's about a... If we spread it out. A little more. Okay. Got that. I know what's missing. Where's our whisk? I think I'm gonna add another teaspoon of ginger. Maybe my ginger is just old. I'm gonna add some more. Maybe it's just not as strong of a flavor like clove. This tastes amazing already, y'all. Don't let me forget to add vanilla. All right, that's better. And of course, you guys. Let's add, because I don't want it to steal the show. Let's add, what is this? This is one quarter teaspoon. Let's add a quarter teaspoon of clove. And we'll do a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. 
Okay, we're gonna do small doses. Because we want the ginger and the molasses to be the star. And we're wanting a gingerbread cookie. Let's give this a taste. Oh, by heavens to Betsy. That's good. We're going to let this come up and simmer for a bit. And then we'll add our vanilla. Now we're going to turn this off. Mm, that's good. And so now we're going to put in our vanilla. I'm going to taste it again. Mmm, 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 mmm. That one is good, y'all. That's really good. Wonder. This one makes a lot too. <laughs> okay, we're going to wait for them to cool down, and this is gingerbread. All right, you guys, there you have it. Well, now that we have our coffee creamers, it's time to go back and take care of that coffee concentrate. Let's go. Okay, so I started this last night. I used regular coffee. Um, this is about 1.1 liters, and I put about a cup and a third into this, and I let it soak overnight. Um, and so now I'm just going to, <laughs> good Lord willing, it's not gonna plunge for me right now, so I'm gonna have to actually, uh, I'm gonna have to stir it to get it to plunge and here we go with another and this my friends is why I have like 27,000 whisks because I'm always needing one for something else okay I guess we'll give it one last stir now we're gonna plunge it I'm dripping coffee everywhere just you know cuz that's what I do okay now we're going to plunge it as, at least as far down as it's going to go. Oh my goodness, it does not want to plunge, y'all. Come on now. I have never in my life. Uh. I guess because it's clogged. Because there is so much. I'm going to pour some off and then see if I can do it again. Let's pour some of this off. Y'all look how dark that is. That is coffee concentrate. It may let me pour most of it like that. <laughs> well, there's some of it. Okay, here we go. It's going to let me plunge some more. Maybe I have to stir it. Plunge. I'm probably getting close to the bottom. Maybe that's that's it because I put a cup in there y'all so that may be all of it Ooh, that is some dark stuff all 
All right, that's probably about all I'm going to get. Because all that is coffee in there, y'all. So what you think that is about 20 inch ounces and there you have it guys your very own cold brew coffee concentrate it's time to give it a try so i'm going to pour uh, that, ooh, that much and then about the same amount of the coffee creamer what I said to do y'all. I have a feeling this is going to be really strong. I have a feeling I might need to add some water. All right now that coffee is strong so you might want to water it down a little more. This is this is the gingerbread. Oh my goodness y'all. Now I can have it anytime I want. Oh my goodness. That's delicious. All right. I'll talk to y'all later. This is really good. Yeah. If you like strong coffee, go for it. I had to water it down a little bit and it is perfect now. Okay, so now is the time we've all been waiting for. I am finally setting up my coffee bar. Now, this, let me tell you a little bit about this cloth that I'm using. Um, it's actually a painter's drop cloth that you put over your furniture, or over your floor, when you're painting in your house. Um, I actually used two of these drop cloths to, to create curtains in my bedroom, but they were too long and they dragged the floor. So these are the sec, this is one of the sections um, of the bottom of one of those, one of my curtains um, that I now just use anytime I need kind of a backdrop for something. I've used it kind of like a table runner. And so that's what that is. You know, if you see those little tiles on my wall right there, those actually, those are, I think, three tiles from the Dollar Tree in Abilene. I found those when I went to visit my son recently. And so I plan on putting those up on all of my walls, but that's as far as I got for this particular project. As I clean one section, I actually put those up on the wall. Um, and so the Thankful and Blessed pumpkin is from Dollar Tree, of course, but it's probably been sometime in the last couple of years that I got that. Um, that blue bowl, uh, well, those two blue bowls are actually from the Dollar General here locally, and they were only $2 each. That metal bucket in between them was a Dollar Tree find, um, and you now this scrunchy hay confetti stuff. I don't know what it's called. I got a bag of it at the Dollar Tree um, to act as hay because I didn't realize I needed it until I needed it. Um, and that blue pumpkin, is that not gorgeous? That pumpkin was 40% um, off at Hobby Lobby, originally $10 and I got it for six. Um, and then I have a Christmas tray and I didn't want to paint it. That's just too much trouble, y'all. And so I have some butcher paper that I cut to the shape of the tray. And I'm just using it to cover up the Christmas theme on the bottom of it. Um, and now I have another. I actually got two of those little buckets. Um, and I actually have a lot of stuff that I have that twine, I, jute, I don't know what you call it. And that's wrapped around the bottom. I have a lot of things with that stuff wrapped around it. So this was just perfect. And I used that bucket as a stand for my pumpkin. That pumpkin is a ceramic pumpkin that I got. It has my name on the bottom of it. And it is probably 40 years old, y'all. My aunt used to have, my aunt and uncle used to have a ceramic shop. And um, all of the kids, we always got ceramic stuff around the holidays. And 
On the other side of that is a jack-o'-lantern, but I don't do jack-o'-lanterns. Um, okay, now these three containers I'm showing you right now, that glass container with a silver jar, that has coffee in it. And I just found those at the Dollar Tree. The white powder is my um, collagen that I always put in my coffee. I have one regular coffee and one decaf coffee for those days when I'm wanting coffee later at night. And I just think I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't have coffee that late at night. Um, and then I got some of those, I have no idea what they're called. Those little candy cookie sticks that are filled with chocolate that you get at the Dollar Tree. I got a couple of um, those. And you guys, that little gumball machine, that was $6, 40% off at Hobby Lobby. And it is basically a jar, like the it's a full-size jar. The part of it is painted to make it look like there's only half a jar. But yeah, I fell in love with it. And I was telling y'all before, you may not realize that that green, bluish color can be used in a thanksgiving or a fall theme but looky there those are little salt and pepper shakers inside my little gumball machine there and while i was yakking and not paying attention i put down some uh, napkins and little uh little plates that i also got from dollar general um, the gla the coffee mug you see right there, I put my sweetener in, I put the little blender attachment or immersion, emulsion, whatever, the little what milk frother type attachment for my immersion blender in that little cup with my measuring cup. It's a one eighth cup measure that I measure out my coffee with. Now, the coffee on the left that you see there, that is actually a caramel pecan coffee that I bought at Walmart the other day, and it is so delicious. Um, now, the candlestick I'm adding, I, I'm going to add a couple of candlesticks, and you guys, I don't know how old they are or where I got them. I was raiding parts of my house and tops of shelves where I just stick stuff that gets in the way, um, and so I... I, I just, I don't know where I got that, that big thing, but usually I put Christmas ornaments or pumpkins or something like that on top of candle holders, um, anymore because I just don't burn that kind of candle. Um, and here is, here's another one that I have no idea how long I've had it. Um, but you know. I'm, I'm running out of things to say. That's a first, huh? Um, but I'm just setting this up the best I can, y'all. And uh, it was it was a fun project, and I really enjoyed. Oh, the two pumpkins up on the two candle holders, those also came from Dollar Tree, of course. And there's also from Dollar Tree. There is a little sign. You'll be able to see it better here in a minute. And it says, Welcome Fall. And that is, I think that's everything. So there you have it. Oh no, I decided, I decided to go get some of my little, oh my goodness, y'all. I love scarecrows. Those are, I, I don't do Halloween. I don't do ghosts and witches and all that stuff. I love pumpkins and I love scarecrows. And so I have a couple of cute little scarecrows that Lord have mercy, there's no telling how long I've had those either. Those are just part of my fall decor. Um, I have a lot of cutesy fall decor and uh, that's part of it. And now, oh, you guys, that's my new coffee mug. I'm in love. I got it at Dollar General. They also had pink ones. And if I were going to get another one, I would have gotten a pink one too, but I, I decided not to. And there is my, there is my uh, French press. But as you can see, at this point, I still, I had not emptied out my coffee concentrate, but I wanted to get it there to just see how everything was going to go together, but that is my French press. Okay, so I did find my other little scarecrow. I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want him, and as you can see, there is that welcome fall sign, again, from the Dollar Tree. Okay, so now I am adding a hand towel. That is actually a necklace. 
um, that I've had for years and the color was perfect. And so I hung a hand towel that I also got at the Dollar Tree and that hook that is attached to my cabinet is also from the Dollar Tree. You guessed it. Okay, so I thought I was done and I was taking a step back to look at it and I was like, oh wait, I forgot what I thought was probably one of the cutest parts and that is the chalkboard. Um, and so now I'm trying to rearrange it to make room for my but first coffee chalkboard. I could have painted it, but that just took too much effort at this point. And I've made all of that coffee creamer and I'm just tired, y'all. I was just tired. And so now I'm trying to fix it and, and even everything out, move around my little scarecrows. But off to the far left, if you see that, that glass jar with the metal lid, that is, well, it's long gone now, but that is the granola snack that I made. And I kid you not, y'all, my husband said that tastes, and his, his words exactly, a bazillion times better than the protein bars that I buy. So apparently he liked it, even though it was full of clove and all of that good stuff. Y'all know me and clove and cinnamon and, and all that good stuff. But yes, he loved that stuff and it's gone. So I've got to make another batch of that. But here we have it, my coffee bar, you guys. I am so happy. I'm so proud of this. <laughs> It is just like, it's my little corner, my little nook. I don't know how practical it is to have that cloth down underneath it because it already has a couple of coffee stains on it, if I'm going to be honest. But I love it just the same. I hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. It's been a blast. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and click the bell notification so you find out every time I release a video.